Jason. Hello, can you all hear me okay? We can. Yes. Jason, welcome to the San Clemente Human Affairs Committee meeting. Mm -hmm. We're so pleased to have you with us as a special guest to present a program we're really excited about with our colleague, Tyler Bowden, Sheriff of Counts. Yeah, so absolutely. To chair. Yeah, so thank you. Welcome, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Wonderful, and uh, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you, uh, Tyler, and others that helped uh, line this up. Um, really honored to be able to uh, uh, speak with you, and I know there's been a, a history of, of things in your community related to character counts. So really good to, to get connected and uh, bring everybody up to speed on where we're at and who we are and, and what we do with the character counts framework. Excellent. All right. Um, well, I'm going to share my screen here, and I have two monitors, so if you see me looking off to the right, it's just uh, my other monitor. So I'll see if that uh, sharing the screen works okay here. Good. All right. Do you guys see that okay? Yes, thank yeah. you. Yes. All right, wonderful. Yeah, so um, as you all know, my name is Jason Lamping, and I'm one of the directors at the Robert D. and Billy Ray Center at Drake University, uh, where we serve as the global home uh, for character counts, uh, as well as a variety of other initiatives that we work on uh, through our department. So we're housed in the School of Education here at Drake, and we do work in, in various industries. Our mission here is to improve civility, through character education and ethical leadership. And our work, all of our work, regardless of industry, is rooted uh, deeply in the six pillars of character. That's trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. And uh, I, I focus most of my time uh, working with schools and youth serving organizations. I also work with uh, boys and girls clubs, community organizations, YMCA's, big brothers and big sisters, and then school districts. And that's on the character counts framework. We also do a lot of work with that, with uh, athletic teams, sports clubs, summer programs, after school uh, programs, camps and those types of things, uh, but deeply rooted uh, also in athletics as part of uh, one of our initiatives. It's called Pursuing Victory with Honor. We, we work with businesses uh, as well. We work on culture and ethics and leadership programs. We, uh, we support family engagement. A lot of that is through our community and, and work with schools on the six pillars of character. We do work in civility and in the public service arena. And then we also have an initiative that was also started by the initial founder of Character Counts, the Josephson Institute of Ethics, and that's ethics in policing. So we do a lot of uh, training on uh, police departments, on uh, how they can integrate in the six pillars and ethics uh, with with policing and any of the initiatives uh, that they work on uh, in the community. So that's, that's just an overview of, of the, the various things that we work on here. Some of them may cross, cross into areas of need in San Clemente. So I wanted to give you that high level overview. Uh, but I'll switch over now to the, the charactercounts.org website and give you a little background on how we got involved with character counts. So we, uh, 25 plus years ago, our current executive director, Scott Racker, and the governor at the time, Robert Ray, uh, governor of Iowa, was uh, interested in finding a, a values-based character education framework that could be uh, implemented in as many schools throughout Iowa as we possibly uh, could connect with. And they went out to find uh, something that might be a good fit. And they found character counts and a connection with the Josephson Institute of Ethics. They became, or we became, the uh, re Iowa Regional Center uh, for all things character counts. So over the past 25 years, we trained hundreds of uh, schools, thousands of educators on implementing character counts. We also added research through Drake University and even Iowa State University. Uh, to different aspects of the program that I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, that being uh, database assessments, an early childhood program, 
as well as some of our middle school and high school resources and even some of the athletics programs that we do. Uh, so we, we had a really tight relationship with the Josephson Institute of Ethics founded by Michael Josephson, which was in the Los Angeles, California area. In 2019, Michael retired. And when he retired, the global license and responsibility of Character Counts transition to our team at Drake University. And that was because of the longevity of that relationship. Uh, and Michael really wanted character counts to be housed and be held at um, this academic institute uh, because of our experience, but because we have the resources to continue to invest in and advance uh, this initiative. Today, we estimate that character counts reaches approximately 8 million youth, uh, families, schools, educators uh, globally across the world. So while we do a lot of work in the United States, we also have a regional affiliate that manages all of Colombia. Our executive director was just in Panama uh, doing uh, sessions there. And uh, Bolivia, we, we've pretty much been uh, all over the world with character counts. But I will say our, our biggest state with character counts is California. And that's probably because Josephson in Ethics uh, Institute was, was based out of Los Angeles. So how character counts got started then prior to us, even at the race center, through Michael, he had a passion for ethics. And he held a summit of brought, brought together different leaders in different fields, a lot in education, to see if they could identify a set of values that were not tied to any personal agenda. They weren't tied to race, religion, ethnicity, uh, socioeconomic status, where you come from. And uh, they got together. And uh, the six pillars of character were born or sort of out of that summit with input from that, that leadership group and representatives from different industries. And so that was over 30 years ago. And so they have continued to sustain today those, those values as pillars that rooted in, in the character counts framework are used to, I mean, help teach kids ethical decision-making skills. What are the values and things that I stand for and how do I use those to ultimately become a good productive citizen, a good person, responsible in my community, but based in how I make decisions every day. So when we work with schools on character counts, it's not just something though that's for the kids. These are values that I mentioned earlier, we bring into all different industries, age levels. And it's really something that uh, can have a significant, significantly positive influence on the leadership, the, the educators, all staff um, within any organization uh, can, can work to model uh, the six pillars themselves. And it can have a profound impact on culture as well, which is a big part of what, what we work on uh, with schools is, is uh, safe culture and climate with this initiative. So uh, the Character Counts website will provide a lot of, of information on uh, the different uh, services, the background, uh, more information on each of the pillars and so on. Uh, but I will bring you to uh, just one page, just give you a, a high level overview of what, of what we call the four wheels. These are really the outcomes uh, sort of compartmentalized uh, to understand what it is we, we uh, try to seek to achieve when working uh, with schools or youth serving organizations. So I already mentioned the six pillars of character and having those become a decision making lens uh, for uh, all people that are involved in the organization or the school. We also work on so, what you might call SEL or social emotional skills. And those are kind of tied to the Castle Core Five, if, if you've heard of those. These are skills around self awareness, social awareness, responsible decision making, relationship building, and self management. So we, we work on things like leadership, uh, communication skills. Uh, creating strong habits, sustaining strong habits, being goal-oriented, setting and achieving goals, uh, being a leader, having a growth mindset, having resiliency and grit. And those skills that might be life skills or success skills are also a part of some of our curriculum and a part of what we work on when we work with schools and especially the middle school and high school uh, age kids as well. We also seek to, to help schools uh, 
build improvement in in the academic focus as well. Um, we've had some research that had backed that 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 character count schools uh, have have. I've seen an uptick in, in some of the academic side of things, but we work on kids that are curious, that are passionate, that are diligent learners, that are effective problem solvers, um, that, like I said earlier, goal achievement, that um, are seeking to um, be responsible and get good grades and those types of things. So that's, that's a part of what we train on and what we work on with the framework. And last I mentioned uh, culture, a culture that's safe, where relationships are key and are worked on intentionally. Uh, one where people are inspired, one where kids are loved and valued and listened to. And, and so positive, safe, safe climate and culture is a key aspect, a key outcome of what we work on. And I like to tell, tell schools that what character counts as a framework, it's not a scope and sequence program. And because of that, it aligns nicely with other initiatives. And I know San Clemente, some of the schools, or maybe all of them use PBIS. Well, a lot of our strongest character count schools use PBIS as well. And, and oftentimes other programs, and that's common in character education that there's typically not just one thing, uh, but often things uh, that work well together. And so part of what we do is, is collaboratively get to know what the school or organization might be doing. And then we can customize and help mold character counts to meet their desired outcomes and objectives and align with, with what they already may be doing as well. So that's, that's something that, uh, you know, it might be a differentiator for us with character counts, um, but something that has had a lot of success in many of the districts that we work with. So uh, I wanted to play a video of Downey, California. Uh, we were just in Downey doing a training. Downey schools is about, I think about an hour of you. It's outside of Los Angeles. I looked it up, but they've been doing character counts for about 25 years here. Uh, but we will also have a trainer in Downey in spring. And so this is about a five minute video and I'm going to, I'll just email it to you guys since I know I don't want to be up against the time <laughs> allotment that I have, but I do think it would be really good for y'all to watch this video because it shows you collectively how the district has implemented character counts and the impact that it's had on all walks of life through that school, students, staff, and so on. So I'll pause right there. Um, what questions do you all have? Jason, it appears uh, to me that there has been some contact with character counts in the schools in San Clemente in the past. <clears throat> but correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not any contact with them right now. Do you know that history? You, you are correct. Our office here, our team has not had any contact or done any trainings. Um, and as far as I know, I don't even know if there's been any like resource purchases or any of our services have not been purchased directly from the Ray Center for San Clemente schools. And that's part of the, the connectivity that I've had with Tyler. We've We've been aware of the mural project, and when you all updated it, we were talking about it in our team meetings, and we really wanted to get better connected to, to you all in the community and possibly the schools as well. But yes, our team does not have that history of how the six pillars may have been introduced originally or when that was to the San Clemente community or even into the schools. But the Josephson Institute of Ethics in Los Angeles they used to do a lot of trainings, open enrollment trainings in California. So my guess is that um, somebody, and I think Tyler maybe even said there might've been a rotary group connection a long time ago, but somebody right. probably attended a training and through that training introduced others to this framework. Yeah, and Jason, I actually have a question um, just in, in terms of, you know, I guess what, what we've seen in our research here in San Clemente is that through that, that previous history of, uh, as you mentioned, a, a Rotarian here in San Clemente taking the character counts training and, and utilizing the curriculum to, um, to, to teach kids in, in our community. Um, and since, you know, since that time, that person has moved out of town, but some of the schools that we've see, as we've seen are still utilizing even some of the same pillars in their in their PBIS uh, curriculum, and so my question is, 
you know, what, what is the difference if, let's say, a school decides, hey, we want to incorporate character counts uh, as a general term and a list of words, or maybe even those exact six pillars into their PBIS matrix, how, how, is, how is actually utilizing the, the lessons or the trainings of character counts different from them just going off and deciding to do that on their own and, and, and having their own uh, findings of, you know, those, those character words and, and what they might teach about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's nothing to say that, that they can't sort of integrate certain words into aspects of what we're doing. We, we would encourage that. And any, any opportunity to get more of the six pillars uh, involved in the day-to-day the -day aspects of school is, is definitely something um, that we would encourage. However, if, if there was a partnership or services delivered through us, we could work on ways to implement character counts sort of with fidelity. Um, there's there's data-based annual assessments uh, that we offer that can help evaluate. There's seven strategic areas of a, of a character counts implementation uh, that aligns with uh, a data-driven assessment that can be taken to, to fully understand uh, all aspects of, of the initiative, which, which may include other things like PBIS as well. Um, and so that, that's one difference. So under this page here, there's an assessments page. Uh, and so we would work with schools on sort of a partnership on doing that annually. And then we would consult with them to work on ways to, basically we say meaningful, measurable, and sustainable. There's a way to measure it that it's having an impact and that it's something that can continue year over year. Uh, a, a robust character counts implementation is really a marathon. Uh, it's, it's something that as it integrates and becomes part of the culture, uh, it takes time to develop. And so in schools go deeper on it in different ways, depends on a lot of different factors, but we have some schools that have been doing, like I mentioned Downey for over 25 years, um, but we help schools that are just getting started or schools that are doing bits and pieces of things, but they're looking for ways to improve in, in other areas. So um, we, we like to have a sort of a consultative collaborative process with schools to help understand their goals and objectives, their mission. And then we help align our initiative and the, the services that we offer with character counts to that. So um, the, the latest iteration of character counts, you could call it 7.0, but that's the latest um, research in the field behind character counts. So that would, there would be new aspects of what we've worked on and are doing that we could bring to San Clemente schools um, that would be different than maybe what they learned, you know, who knows, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, so does that, does that make sense, Tyler? Any follow-up questions to that? Um, no, I mean, that's, Great response, and I appreciate it. It's a great presentation, and and thank you so much for for being here with us. Yeah, we certainly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this this services page here. You're gonna follow up with a link, right? Yep, I will send the the video to the um, Downey uh, link to the Downey video, and then this outlines the different areas that. Uh, we could work on with schools, communities, or youth serving organizations, including workshops. Um, we have a, a membership where we do consultation. And like I said, optionally, the assessments. Uh, and then we have curriculum, different curricular resources, pre-K through high school. Um, so uh, if, if there were schools that wanted to, to visit about that, like I said, it would really be a collaborative process to understand and learn about the things they're doing but also what challenges they might be up against with, we've seen a lot since the pandemic, um, kids and behavioral issues, men mental health problems, communication skills, bullying, um, cultural implications with teachers and educators and stress levels, all of these things we work on in different ways um, as well with schools. So yes, I will follow up with a link. Should I send that to Tyler with some of that additional information? Yeah, Tyler, yeah that's fine. Uh, okay. Very yeah, good. Um, any other questions? I, I, just, you, I, have time. Say, Jason, I think it's so helpful that you're fulfilling some of these soft needs that kids have because they don't get it anywhere else. I mean, we'd like to say we hope they get it at home or if they're involved in any extracurriculars, but we have no way of knowing that. 
And there are so many just fundamental core things that you're reinforcing. I mean, what I saw, the diversity of the kids, you know, hugging each other and standing there proudly on the different steps that you showed and so forth. Mm. It's really heartening because, you know, we always joke around that it takes a village to raise our children, but I think you're filling a, an extremely important role. Yeah, absolutely. It's It's been my passion to be here for the last four years to uh, be a part of this. And I get the luxury of going out and visiting with schools that have a robust character counts implementation. And all I can say is when somebody says, well, well, what's the culture like? It's almost like you have to be there and see it. Um, but it, it, it gives you chills. But like, like you've said, um, when everybody's we, we call it teach and force advocate and model good character when everybody's participating in that and they're using that as a way to have relationships with these kids and really meet them in the needs with the things that they need help with. And I work with a group of um, seventh graders at my church. They are struggling with so many different um, <laughs> attention deficit, you know, things, things that uh, calm, soft skills, life skills, um, we want in our school smart kids and good kids, right? And we feel like character counts is one of many ways that can really help um, with those things. So I appreciate that very much. Well, we look forward to seeing your video from Downey. And thank you so much for, for sharing uh, some of the good work that you do with our, with our group. We appreciate it. Yeah, fantastic. So I look forward to uh, staying in touch. And I will be in um, San Diego in April, early April. So I'll touch base with Tyler too. So if there's ever a way to meet y'all in person, um, that would be great. Well, we so, love it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the extra time and best of luck with the rest of your meetings today. See you guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye.